Hey everyone, welcome back to the Sacred Space Podcast. My name is Gina Stockton and I'm excited that you are here. I am welcoming back to the Sacred Space my dear friends Bruce Smith and Justin Hepner. Justin is the co-lead pastor of New Community Church in Vista, as well as a counselor and prophetic, deep well full of wisdom. Always love having conversations with him. And Bruce is my mentor, Justin's mentor, and pours into, walks with, and mentors countless pastors and leaders all over the country. And um, I brought them specifically together to talk about family, the redefinition, redemption, and restoration of family and relationships. You know, we were all made for relationships, but in this broken world, most of those relationships are fractured, are broken, are distorted, whether it's with God or with each other. And part of what Jesus died for was to bring some healing and restoration to those things. And what does that look like? What does it look like to allow ourselves to be vulnerable, to allow ourselves to enter into a place of intimacy with God and with one another and let Him bring healing to those places? So this is a a good one. It's a rich one and it's a deep one. So sit back, relax, and um, I pray that the Lord would really speak to you and minister to you during your time in the sacred space. Kind of fun to have all of us in the same room. Bruce, you live in Oregon. You come down, what, once a quarter maybe? Once a quarter, yep. Hang out with us. And Bruce is uh, Justin's mentor and mine. Justin was so kind to share him (laughs) with me several years back, as well as many others. So there's a lot of people that you walk with. But it's kind of fun to be in relationship together and to have seen what God's doing in both your lives and how he's using you. Bruce, you and I talked a bit about the podcast and just conversations and the people that you're walking with. You walk with people all over the country and pastors and leaders and a lot of different areas and a lot of different stages in their growth and their leadership and their ministry. And you see themes. You see Mm -hmm. things that come up regularly. You see things that are common and you see a lot of redemption and healing. And one of the areas that you have talked a lot about is family Mm -hmm. and by family really the redefinition of family the redemption of family and the restoration of family so justin and i have similar and different stories but similar brokenness in our history with our families and so i know for i can say for myself (laughs) part of when i came to the lord was finding a place that i belonged Jesus, and then the church became a substitute for my family and a place that was able to step into the gaps where my family wasn't able to. Um, Everything from a couple that I met on a mission trip when I was 18, Terry and Robin Sartain, who kind of became my first spiritual parents. And there was a home fellowship in their house, and I led worship there and just watching them. And being in their presence was such a significant thing for me and and brought so much healing and balance to my life in a lot of ways. Um, And I know, Justin, you have a lot of stories of that, too. And even the mentor we talked about in the first podcast you and I did, where you talked about the guy who just took the time to see you, that mentor of yours in school, and, and just took the time to to see you and know you and and lead you and all that. But in some of that, it's easy to make those people a substitute for the Lord, too. So there's interesting balances in that. And then wrestling through, and Justin, I'd love to hear your thoughts, too, wrestling through how to love your family, family, your biological family, your broken family, and all of the the complication that's there. And how much do you engage and not? How do you have healthy boundaries and, and all those things? I think one of the important things to acknowledge is that so this conversation doesn't only hit some, that it hits more people than less, is that regardless of the background you came from, whether you define it as broken or you define it as healthy, every single individual was separated from God due to sin. Yeah. And when they come to Jesus, they're born into something, born again, into something that is defined by this word or these words spiritual family in some way, shape, or form. 
it's at that point that you realize um, how what you grew up around um, reflects that relationship yeah. accurately that you have now with God and or is incongruent with that relationship that you now have with God. So right. the conversation's much wider than just identifying through the lens of my background was so heavy, broken, and quote, messed up. I think every person, regardless of their background, has to redefine. Redefinition has to happen to everybody. Yeah. Once they come to Christ, they have to redefine. Um, even down to simple things like, you know, in Scripture, you see the reference to those who didn't know each other now calling each other brothers yeah. or sisters. That's part of a redefinition because when you accepted Jesus and when I accepted Jesus, we now have a great heavenly father. Yeah. And that great heavenly father isn't just my father. He's your father. Yeah. That makes you my sister. Right. And that makes me your brother. <clears throat> Immediately you see there's a redefinition of family that has to take place all the way around. And I would argue that spiritual family um, does run deeper than blood family, but blood family is where most of us have been formed into who we are. Yeah. So there's this dichotomy. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so much of the healing and barriers to receiving God as father or this and the other come from our family of origin, not to necessarily place blame. You know, I I think it's, we can, we can get into that place of finger pointing and everything, but it's more awareness so that then we can step into a healthier understanding. It's, it's shedding, shedding the old so that we can receive fully what God has for us. And then also as we mature, learning how to then go back and stand in that place with our family of origin and love them well and demonstrate the kingdom and how we respond and how we act, how we react or not in all those ways. And I think sometimes that's, that's the interesting thing you can, you know, even on this podcast, I interviewed Brian and Linda Seitz who shared their story of being unequally yoked for seven years. She knew Jesus, he didn't. And Brian said something really powerful at some point where he said it felt like she was having an affair, but it wasn't with another person. It was with church. It was with God. And so even in our finding this healing and renewal and this new definition of family and suddenly a a larger family and a spiritual family, maybe a family that understands us and gets us and relates to us like no one ever else has, how do you then not alienate your family of origin and, and how do you love them well in the middle of all that as well? While if you come from a very broken place like you and I do, being healthy with boundaries and not allowing yourself to be in a place of pain, if that makes sense. It does, but there's foundational elements to family. And (laughs) life experience will alter how we look at those things, those elements. Uh, We don't realize those. we We don't get exposed to those. We don't understand the depth of those until we get to the place of having our Heavenly Father showing us what family is and what family is not showing us what it means to be a son or a daughter, what it is not. What it means to be a father or a mother, what it is not. And if we're able to, and when we are able to, be released from the earthly definitions to the heavenly definitions, what we're shown in Scripture, what we're shown by our time with our Heavenly Father, we're able to then release and be able to provide that to all people. So whether it's our biological family, it's our friends, it's those people that are within the church environment or outside, it's it's all people. When I when I mentor, I say to those people, you're now part of my family. And by that I mean that they're in a place where I will treat them as sons or daughters or brothers or sisters in everything that I do and the way that I approach and the investment of my time and my heart and the openness and all the elements of what it means to be family. When we stay in the earthly definition, we control. Yeah, it's good. And when we control, we hide. Hmm. We think it's safe, but we hide. And to the extent that we don't release control, then we always have fragments of the earthly definition of allowing us to get into that place of, again, intimacy. 
And intimacy is the foundation of family. It's the foundation of, of love. And allowing yourself to be released allows you to fully realize um, the depth of love, therefore the depth of intimacy, therefore the depth of family that God has shown us and says, I love you in this way. You are part of my family. I want you now to be a vessel to share that with others. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And I don't want to breeze by, you brought up the word intimacy, which is such a interesting word right now. It's so been hijacked. I think there's a lot of people that are very scared of that word, have a very distorted understanding of what that means. And if we're going to receive fully what Jesus died for, that's intimacy with him, first of all. You know, Adam and Eve in the garden were naked literally and figuratively before God and walked with him every morning. And they were exposed, right? But they were content and they were safe. And they felt loved and they were covered. And as soon as the fall happened, suddenly that exposure was a dangerous place. Yes. Suddenly they started to fear and they started to doubt and doubt themselves and doubt God's character. And so I think humanity (laughs) has been on this journey of fighting intimacy in general But as believers, what does it look like to allow ourselves to be exposed first with Jesus, God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, then with ourselves, (laughs) you know, allow ourselves to be exposed, allow ourselves to face the things that we see that we don't like, that we do like, allow allow God to show us how he sees us, then to be able to turn to each other, your spouse, your kids, your friends, your parents, and be able to have that level of trust and exposure in those relationships in a healthy way. The greatest and the, the purest example of intimacy is exactly what you said. And ultimately, can we achieve that? No, yeah. probably not. Or no, we cannot. But we have the example and we have the foundation that we can build as close to that perfect intimacy that we've been shown. And again, if we control, if we allow things to be held and hidden, then ultimately those will manifest itself into lies, into raw emotions that are negative, that will block our ability to to ever enter into intimacy at the level that is needed for true love and true definition of family to be realized. And so it's really, as you said, it's trust, it's belief in, it's releasing of. Yeah. Those things that it's, you know, in this difficult walk that we that we have to allow our hearts to be open to the place that allows truth and the joy of emotional intimacy to release all aspects of our lives. Yeah. It's a scary, scary place. It is a scary place. And so right now we're talking kind of at the 30,000 foot level with big thoughts and ideas, but I would love like whether it's just personal experience or with people that you have poured into either of you. I mean, how do we see how this um, distortion and lack of understanding of intimacy. How, how do we see that? Um, the fruit of that. How do we see that ripping things off? What, what's been your personal experience? What have you seen other people experience? I have one, maybe more framework kind of thing. Yeah. Too, as we're talking. Yeah, I think something that's really important in the process is recognizing that, like I said earlier, that all of us have to go through a redefinition of family. But the way that you were born into this family is, as the scripture says, that the spirit drew you to the father. And there was a moment where you had this, uh, woe is me, where all of a sudden the light of who Jesus is shone on you in the darkness of where you were in your separation from God. And in that moment, 
through God exposing mm-hmm. the darkness in you and through the exposure to his love and the process of it, you were willing to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and turn from those things towards him, not just turn away from those things, right. turn towards him, right? Yeah. And so now you're partnered in this relationship with him that came through Jesus, but now you have father, right? But that came through exposure, through being exposed and being intimately sought and touched yeah. by God the Father on the heart and soul level. Yeah. So at what point do we in our journey believe that our spiritual growth should should not happen like that anymore? Mm, and a good. lot of our salvation story for all of us and whatever our conversion experience entailed for all of us it entailed this i was found and i was found out yeah yeah that i was separate from him and then i found out that i was separate from him and i turned to him through being exposed by truth and relationship with him that brought me into intimate connection yeah. with him and now i'm told to boldly come into yeah, that. Yeah. I'm told to boldly like run to him through Jesus. Yeah. And that's the connection I have. So the question for me is how willing are we to continue the process in our spiritual growth yeah. of the exposure process? Mm. And I would just say it comes down to those two um, words to know and be known. Yes. Right. And I think that's what intimacy is. Know and be known. Yeah. Know and be known. Well, it started in your relationship with God, the father, when the spirit drew you and you recognize woe is me. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm known. I am a ruin. Like Isaiah in Isaiah 6 saw the Lord and his response to being exposed to that picture of heaven and the person of God was, woe is me. And I think that was the beginning of intimacy where he then said, oh my gosh, I'm known and I know what I am known for before this God, but I'm here, I'm, but I'm a man of unclean lips, right? Yeah. And we all have that experience. I don't want to get stuck in the Isaiah narrative too much, but I think where we get lost in our spiritual journey is that we forget that the way we were bought into the family was through being known by God. And now we sought to know him out of that. But we don't actively expose ourselves to one another so that we can be known to others because of fear and darkness and shame and those things. And because of that, are we truly being known? And are we, are we leaning into the people of God, to my brothers and sisters, as well as to God, <laughs> yeah. so that we can grow? And the degree to which we do those things, I believe, is connected to the degree to which we grow. And the degree to which we don't connect with the Father to be exposed and seen by Him fully and put our hearts before Him or before others, it limits the potential of our growth. Yeah. So it all comes down to know and be known and intimacy, because that's how it all started. Yeah, so how did that play out in your life? When I met you, you had gone to Indiana, which really kind of... (laughs) pulled you and Mm -hmm. it was just you and your boys and then this guy showed up Mm -hmm. you know and then you move back and I feel like I mean I feel like I've watched you guys shift a bit in you allowing people to breach that perimeter yeah so to speak so would you be up for sharing a little bit about that process yeah absolutely yeah I don't necessarily view myself as someone that was closed off I think I was ready for a new journey in how much I had been opening up to people. I was coming off the back of um, a pretty radical um, moment of almost losing my son that triggered a lot in me that I was not um, able to define. And as a result of that, it was crippling me and a lot of my relationships that God had surrounded with me for my good. But I was resisting those relationships because I didn't want to um, have too many chefs in the kitchen while I was processing something new. Mm, It's good. And um, so I was protecting myself. And by protecting myself, I was resisting the things that God had surrounded me with. And it took, you know, to finally tilt the scales, you know, God sent someone of incredible significance into my life so that the scales could be tipped for me to recognize, oh my gosh, I'm just trying to keep myself from having too many people working on what God's trying to cook inside of me. Like I was keeping people at bay. And um, once I found that, I mean, I saw it bright as day. And for whatever reason, God's always had me turn quickly when I've seen something and just know when it's true and step all the way in, both feet, not one foot. And that was my relationship with Bruce that really um, God used uh, as a crowbar to kind of open me up the rest of the way. And little did I know that we were going through the process, but God was using me as a mirror for him to rediscover who he was as a spiritual leader. 
in so many ways. Things he had always done in corporate world for everybody, I think he was starting to find out, oh my gosh, these aren't just like mentoring people in the office. This is connected to something much greater. And um, Bruce got to see, and I got to see the blessing just pour out in my life and in his life through us being in moment by moment um, intimacy with the Father through everything we were processing together. And that's uh, that was a massive piece of my development. It came through just another level of intimacy, you know, that I'm not necessarily bad at opening up. If anything, I probably share too much and regret it sometimes, you know, but I think it's one of my gifts is that I'm not afraid to disclose. Hmm. But that didn't mean I was really good at intimacy. Well, yeah, I was going to say, you're yeah. very willing to share, but allowing someone to yeah. stand with you or be with you in that, or even allowing someone to give to you yeah. is a whole nother. By nature, I've probably got a pretty big checklist of things people need to be qualified through in order for me to be in a position to listen. And hmm. unfortunately, that checklist is built by the flesh. Yeah. And uh, it's it's always a process of breaking those walls down. Um, but it, it took Justin a while to trust and to feel safe. And that's that's a thing that, uh, that God has given me as a gift, that when he brings people alongside me, that he releases their hearts to trust and to feel safe and knowing that the Father is there and loving them. And it's a safe place to disclose, as Justin said. Disclosure and declaration is so critical. You need to speak the words. You need to hear yourself speak the words, or you need to write them down, and you need to declare them to someone, because you can't be released until there's declaration. And declaration is is not just, I, I declare that this is what has happened in the past or how my family was defined or what took place. Declaration then needs to be releasing that space and filling it with, with God and His love. And it's that, it's that process of, again, releasing control. Once you release, you release control, you allow God to fill that space. And that's where you do redefinition. So can you maybe share an example of that? Because again, I feel like some of this probably feels deep and philosophical, but could you share a story or, you know, you don't have to give names or anything, but a circumstance where you either walked with someone or you yourself walked through something where you saw this played out, that door was closed and then that, that safety and that trust was built and then that brought about that declaration and that release, which then brought. Sure. Uh, so again, it happens every time. Uh, it, God is always always there in that, in, in orchestrating that. But a great example is that most people will come and say, I, I really need this. Yes. <laughs> Very yeah. common. Right. And, and they'll say, what's the process? And, I, and all I will say is God will show up and he'll show us what you need. Yeah. And he'll show you how to release yourself to be able to share, declare, and move forward. Yeah. So an individual will, will connect and they will say they need these things. Let's say I need to move my career forward or I need something. And God will put them in a place where they're able to go back through layers and layers of things that have happened in their lives that they've not declared to anybody else, they've not shared, or they didn't see them or don't remember what what took place. And God unpacks those things. He unpacks those layers of, of things that have been accumulating on the identity of these individuals and therefore have been steering both the direction of their lives as well as their ability to be intimate um, in, in its truest form. And, and once those layers are um, eliminated one by one, as Justin said, once the light of God shines on, on the darkness and each layer comes off, then we're able to say, my heart has been molded this way because of my relationships have been defined because of this. 
And you're really, even if the situation is true, so it took place, with God's forgiveness and his loving heart and all that, that Justin was talking about, those things become lies. They don't become part of, they peel off as part of your identity. They peel off in, in what you hold as a definition of love and relationship and, and family. And, and it, it puts people in a place of being able to intimately say, first, this is my relationship with God. This is who he is. This is who I am. And really, I love who I, who I am. I love who God has created in me. And then you start that definition of, again, if intimacy is the foundation of love and love is the foundation of family and family is the foundation of relationship, then you start building these blocks. And it allows people to do that redefinition. And it's a redefinition by how God shows us what it means to be intimate, what love really means, what family really means. And it, it happens 100% of the time, Gina. I've never seen where God has not done that. But it's that opening. And so with Justin and I, it really was so many, he had so many things in his life that had hurt him. And, and, you know, he'd been blessed by having a lot of people around him that had, had walked with him for a period of time. But there was, there was inherent fear of, of fully opening up and trusting. And the blessing that we were given was that the journey for us to be in that place of safety, that place of trusting, that place of sharing was very short. And then we started looking into his journals, which were an expression of what was going through his, his heart that he was capturing in words and pictures and things like that. And we started with God, started just breaking them down and declaring them to either be this, you know, this is what God is trying to show you, or this is a lie. Mm. And it's a lie that's no longer going to have control over you. Yeah. This is what this is who you are, Justin. This is what you're supposed to be doing. This is how God designed you. And we went through it was first probably first one or two years where Justin would bring his journal and we would sit down and we would we would talk through what what God was showing with this. And we would knock down the lies and we would lift up the truths. And when we would lift up the truths and knock down the, the lies, Justin I believe, got a clearer and clearer vision and understanding and love of the unique, incredible creation that God had in him and to show him what was possible, what God had in front of him, what was possible. And that released him to, I, I think, realize the greatness and the breadth of being a son first and then being a father, which released him to understand the, the incredible greatness of genuine family, which released him to go beyond biological to be able to really bring in, in the most genuine way, not controlling any aspect, all the people around him to be part of his family. And that was a real breakthrough that was inside of him, but it it was behind so many walls. I remember we kept we'd say we knocked down a wall, and I loved his. He gave uh, this great visual. He said, "You know, you can look at a negative, and you can see the image, and then you put another negative on it, and you can kind of see the image, or maybe you see two images." By the time you put 10 images on top of each other, it's dark. And you can't see any of those images and you can't understand them. And so we really peeled off one of those, those negatives and we looked at the image and we said, this is what, this is what God is showing. But that's intimacy. Mm. It's opening your heart to allow God to show you the truth with no control and just releasing in belief and knowing that it's true 
about who God has created. I've just seen it just blossom. Him, I've seen it blossom. His wonderful, you know, wonderful relationship he already had with love that he had with his wife. His kids, I, you can see it in his sons. You can see him as a blossomed as a father and as a husband and as a friend. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And that's, that's intimacy. Yeah. That's intimacy. Yeah, looking back on it, it's kind of crazy when you say things like we started looking at Justin's journals. A little context. I started journaling when I was 13 years old. So every day about everything. And um, I have still have almost all of them in my possession. And for so many years, it was a place where I went to hammer out uh, my identity so I could understand myself. And over the years, God broke through that picture and I was understanding God and myself. And then I thought that's everything I ever needed is that I could just walk alone as a warrior, just me and God. Look how strong I am, world. I need nobody else and nothing else. And no one needs to break into this thing. And then God sent me someone that um, asked questions of me in a really powerful way and through Bruce. And here I was sharing those journals with him, totally unashamed because it was just me and God. And I didn't realize that I was welcoming someone um, from this world into the, into the puzzle, you know, into the picture with me, into the, uh, at to, the, or to the table, really, of my processing. And God was gradually revealing himself, pursuing me from when I was 13 I was getting to know myself when I was 13 to 19. I was getting to know the father from 19 until 27 years old, 28 years old. And I was getting to know not just myself and the father, but I was getting to know who I was through someone else in the body of Christ. And they were helping me peel back more layers. And um, nobody's any different than that. We're all the same. We all wrestle with all of those things. And there was a power there. Uh, for sure. And, uh, you know, the long process to learn to receive. But the, the thing is that when you're blind in an area, they call it a blind spot because you don't know you have it. Yeah. You know, and you can't see it and you don't know what you don't know. And that's one of the gifts of the body of Christ is that you wonder why you always feel like you're walking alone and it's just you and God and nobody else and nobody's going to come alongside of me. Um, part of the way God designed this is that we would walk in community with people intimately so that we could know him better. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so my outcome was always to know the father better and on the journey i made an incredible soul level friend you know and yeah. i started to redefine my relationships through a lot of that and uh that was very very releasing for me and it's all god's pursuit all of it was um god getting to know me and us just taking the time to do it but i didn't know i didn't see that i was afraid to open or scared to open up or do uh, it was like gibberish to me when it was when it was told to me by Bruce like oh you, you got he didn't tell me for a while but he's like, <laughs> you got so many layers of fear and all You're these like things. no I don't yeah like <laughs> what's fear <laughs> yeah. fear runs from me yeah. you know it's <laughs> right, like right. no way I was I was owned by things and I didn't have access and this was God's means yeah I mean, God brings family to understand family. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, think of that. Yeah, you can't, you can't give what you've never um, learned and never been filled with and all those things. But, you know, I, <laughs> I think it's, uh, you have to be shown. And the book of Job says it so well. And he just says, God speaks to a man in so many ways. I'm paraphrasing. He's like, to one, he speaks in a dream. And, to, and it's like three times and man still doesn't hear or understand and this is Elihu at the end of the book of Job and I'm like oh my gosh it's like everyone on earth should identify with that and, you know God's always reaching to us and there just comes that right season to finally hear you know in that right moment and that's a big part of the nature of my relationship with Bruce that's for sure yeah yeah and had you not been willing to let him come close, yeah. then that journey... Would, we wouldn't be sitting here. We wouldn't be sitting here, right? No, that's the crazy part, too, is um, 
I'll just be really frank and very honest. As someone who's walked with people my entire ministry life, this is year 21 for me of full-time ministry, meeting with people all week, every week, as much as I can. It is still just so rare to find someone that doesn't want to just keep having the same two or three conversations over and over and over Mm. again and never make a decision to actually change something. And one of the gifts in this life is when you realize that God's put truth in front of you, you have to respond by faith and you have to respond immediately. And so many people wind up in these same conversations with someone like me or Bruce or with you, Gina, and it's the same three things over and over and over and over again. And you come to a conclusion that I need to go do this now. I need to, I need to do something tangible that makes a change in my world based on the truth that we just discovered. Yeah. And we usually know what that thing is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it could be a marriage, it could be a parenting thing, it could be a job thing, it could be any, it could be a financial thing. Like, and believe you me, Bruce and I have talked about it all. But the one thing that he knows and the one thing that I um, get excited about is that when we come to a conclusion and we've worked through some things, it's not even 20 minutes, 25 minutes, or an hour later that I'm back on the phone saying, did it, mm-hmm. waiting on the Lord to see what happens now, time and time and time again. And those are the steps. Intimacy is nice when it's just healing the good old soft inside of you and making it softer for God to do things. But did I really intimately connect with what I was told or what we came to? And if I did, then I should be able to say I did something about it. Yeah. Other than that, I was just getting a nice spiritual hug, which is a good thing too. Right, but, but it can stop there. It totally can. I mean, that well, you, it totally does. It it does yeah. constantly, you know. And people, you know, they want. Well, look, look, look. Ouch. See, you know, and then they want oh, that yeah. empathy. Well, being hurt sucks. And the empathy is yeah. the first step of it. The empathy is like, okay, I am cared for. I am safe. And then we move into being able to receive truth, and then transformation. Right, mm-hmm. but. Not everybody's willing to go there because there's a comfort in their pain. Oh, you know, there, there's, um, I was just thinking about, um, as you were talking, the, you know, so much of our identity, like Bruce, you alluded to this and Justin, you also did too, that we're, we're so, f- we're formed. We're formed by our family of origin. We're formed by our experiences, what has been done to us, what hasn't been done for us and everything in between. Yep. And that, um, that builds our infrastructure, you know, God knit us together, but how we allow ourselves to function and receive and interact with the world is built based on those things. And so this process you guys are talking about, about coming into healthy intimacy of being seen and known by God, but then allowing to be seen and known by someone else because God made us for relationship with himself and each other. And when we let that that perfect work have its way and the negative layers are peeled back and now we can finally stand in our identity, now we're redefined. And so now we go back in my family of origin. Now I'm standing in that place, yes, as a biological son or daughter, but not identified by all of that. And I'm standing now as God's son or daughter. Yeah. And that, that's an interesting thing because it's so easy. Like all of us have had a situation where, you know, you could be 50 years old and like so healthy and on with your life and you have one conversation with a parent, you know, and you're back to being 17, you know, and that, you know what I mean? It just takes you right back to that place of insecurity, that place of fear, that place of whatever defined you at that moment. So how to then take all of this transformative knowledge and truth and love and then be able to stand in those places. Yeah. Well, isn't that the ultimate standoff between the spirit and the flesh? Hmm, yeah. You're born again. Now you carry that spiritual man, spiritual woman into the places of a familiar battle. And now the battle belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to you. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not in your own might. And we don't wage war against flesh and blood. Those things don't make sense to someone that's not spiritually awake. Yeah. And now you walk in spiritually awake to respond to the truth of God in your life. And that should give you confidence to respond. But you have to be reminded every single time that you've been transformed by the spirit and that you are someone new, that that's the ultimate standoff. Standoff for between flesh and spirit is I've been changed, but the situation and the people that helped me form this way, maybe they haven't. Yeah. And oh man, 
Yeah. You know, uh, how do I not read the script like I used to? I'm a yeah. new character in the story, you yeah. know? Um, so. And not use this new identity as a platform of condescension and judgment. Or escape, <laughs> right? <laughs> All of it, which is, in, in essence, condemnation, judgment is control. Yeah. Escape is control. You're keeping yourself safe. Yeah. From intimacy. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. That's what that is. You don't want to know. You don't want to be known, one. Right. And because of that, it's better just to not know. Right. Yourself or those other people or situations or circumstances. You can just run from it. Yeah. And um, I don't see Jesus after his baptism running from the enemy. I don't see him running to the enemy. I see him running after the Father. Yeah. And he's tested and tempted in the wilderness while he's 40 days hungry. Yeah. Right? Um, I don't see the Apostle Paul running back and with his fiery spirit attacking all of those people that made him into the Pharisee that he was. I see him withdrawing and being intimate with the Father and then being redeployed back in, sitting underneath the teaching of the current apostles. Yeah. Listening to those dudes talk. Dude. That's incredible. You want to talk about a flesh versus spirit battle yeah. and a redefinition of family? Yeah. This guy was like four-star general over the pharisaical movement to eradicate Christians. And now he's sitting underneath the leadership yeah. of those that are the apostles. Redefinition of family. Decision to go face those things, knowing that he is a new creation. Well, decision. And let's flip it to... Those apostles that allowed him to come in to sit because he was... There's a murderer amongst us. Yeah. Yeah. So for them to be able to set aside their fear, for them to be able to allow that end of the sea coming that direction is huge. Yeah. That's, you know, that, yeah, crazy. We've all been given, if we've walked this correctly, we've been given a couple tools. And the first tool is that we've declared those things that have taken place, um, that were real, to no longer be the truth and their lies. So I just want to make sure we're being clear. So when you say those things that have taken place, you're talking about hurt, trauma, pain, experiences, the things that maybe we carry baggage for. I just want to be clear. They're real, yes. So they're, they're real, Gina, but they become lies. They yeah. don't. They don't carry on as our identity. Okay? Yeah. So we have. We've been blessed with that. We've been. We've been forgiven. God has. God has wiped that out of our past. So again, I just want to be super clear because not everybody that is listening is maybe even had a conversation on this level. So when you say those things are just lies or become lies, what it isn't that. What happened or didn't happen was a lie. It means that that situation, trauma, pain, experience formed a lie. It formed a, I'm abandoned. I'm not wanted. I am worthless. I am ugly. Those are the lies. And those lies set up strongholds within us. And the more we come into agreement with those, the more those just become our truth and our identity. That is correct. Okay. So thank you. That's those, great. Those lies are the strongholds. Yes. They are, are the strongholds. Yes. Are the strongholds. Yes. Call them what they are. Yes, they man, are. I, and I do in my prayer life. I yes. Mean, man, stronghold of abandonment. Get the heck off of me. The stronghold yes. of orphan. What's that all about? You yeah. know, it's those sorts of things. Yeah. Once you declare, once you're released from those things, you're then aware of those things that might trigger you. Right. And you're in a place of intimacy with the Father to say, those aren't truths. Yeah. Those don't define me, Father, and I'm not going to allow these these to dictate what I'm going to do. Yeah. So we've been released from those things in the past that have had a stronghold on us. And then, in the most beautiful way, we understand because we've, we've experienced true intimacy, we understand what true love is. Yeah. Okay? True intimacy, true love, true family, true relationship. And so when we we enter into those spaces where it's a difficult place with those that we have walked life with, we have a new lens for how we love them. Yeah. Because now we have a view of, so what does it mean to be family? Right. By what God has shown us and what he's planted in our heart. What does it mean to truly love 
even though those individuals may be still trying to hurt us in some way because they're holding on to things. Right. And it changes our lens and it changes the way we love and it changes the way we interact. And it allows us not to dip into those places of uh, negative emotions, which would put us back into a place of control. Yeah, there's something I want to I want to go back really quick. So as we expose those lies, we receive the truth, mm-hmm. and there's that redefinition. And you said, now the enemy's going to try to tempt us to back, back into that place, but now we know what the truth is. So now we have this authority, we have this understanding, but that's also where that relationship with that family comes in. Because the enemy can easily isolate me, I can go through something, and get hit with this darkness, with this thing. And this has happened. And I'll call you, Bruce, and go, ah, I'm mm-hmm. under this thing, right? Mm-hmm. And it's that relationship that helps to expose things, right? When, when you yes. turn the light on, when you shine the light on the darkness, it has to, it has to scatter. Yes. It doesn't have room to grow. And what's interesting is I love when, when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. And he was dead in the tomb for three days, and he comes out. And Jesus could have restored him completely, like fully clothed, clean, but he didn't. Lazarus comes out still bound in the grave clothes. And then he tells the community, go loose him, you know, unwrap him, Mm -hmm. basically remove the grave clothes. And so there's there's a very much intentionality with how God designed us to be to live in relationship. Like, like Justin was saying earlier, he was saying me and God, I'm good. Like God, you know, I don't need anybody else. I'm intimate with the father. Like he, nobody knows him. Like I know him and we're, it's us, you know, to the end. But there's, there's this interesting intentionality that God is like, no, but I'm, I've made you to also work this out with one another. And there's something powerful in that and something um, intentional in that and something not to be missed. Because I, th- I think one of the greatest tools the enemy uses is isolation. He brings accusation and then he does everything he can to cause you to isolate. Whether that's going to church on one Sunday and, you know, the recording going on in your head, well, look at all these people. You know, well, they didn't, they're not thinking the things that you're thinking. Well, they all, clearly, they're having an amazing relationship with their husband or their wife or their kids or, or with Jesus, and you're not. You better not tell them who you really are, because when you do, you know, and it's, it's, it's further isolating, further pulling you away, because he knows that if we're willing to be intimate with one another and with him, that he has lost power. Absolutely. He's lost any, Absolutely. any pathway in to build up strongholds again and to reestablish. We're, we've That's been great. designed by God, I believe, to be intimate. We've been designed by God to love together. We're to love together in community as a family. If we ever get to the point where we believe we can walk alone or we can handle this alone, then you're exactly right. That will then put us in a place in which darkness will show you something different. Yeah. There's fear in that first step towards relationship and truth and trust and not controlling it. Yeah. And that's why it's so difficult to, for, for all of us to take that first step. It was, it was difficult for Justin. I pursued him. Yeah. He, you know, it wasn't the, he came and gave me a big hug and said, here we go. I pursued him. It was three or four times of saying, let's get coffee, let's get coffee, let's get coffee. I feel like I want, I don't want to let this episode go by without acknowledging something. I think with a a lot of people that I've walked with in different places, they have, and I would say especially those that grew up in church, they have had experiences where that ends up not being a safe place. And they have taken that risk to be vulnerable with someone, Mm -hmm. and that vulnerability turned out to be harmful. Mm -hmm. And so the tendency is then, to again, to isolate, shut off, pull back. I don't need spiritual community. I don't need to be a part of a church. I'm just going to do it my own. You know, I'm going to be on my own. And 
that is the the grand risk, right? Like relationship is risky, you know? Like when you fall in love, you're exposing your heart to be either accepted or rejected. With Jesus, there is not a risk. He is safe. He has demonstrated his love. That's that's there. But with people, we're all broken and we're all in different places on our journey. And so we may experience being hurt and being able to take that to the Lord, being able to process that, being able to know that it's okay to go ouch, know that it's okay to be angry. You know, God, God can walk you through that. But the moment that I choose to partner with bitterness, the moment I choose to partner with offense, the moment I choose to maybe not even consciously partner with unforgiveness and I isolate myself, and then I start closing myself off to other believers to, and, and, I, and I don't allow myself to take the risk to find someone who's safe, then that's just a, a, a very dangerous place to be. It's a place where the enemy can wreak havoc. It's a place where we are susceptible to really deception and other voices that are not God's. But I want to acknowledge the fact that that can happen and it's painful and those are things just like family of origin that can form us and and create tendencies and patterns that can affect our marital relationships, that can affect our relationship with our kids. And so God is constantly pursuing us and his tender, loving care does not want to leave us in that place. There's more. He didn't make us just to survive. He made us to thrive. Yeah. And so... If we are willing, and I, I want to acknowledge and recognize the fact that it can be very difficult and a very scary thing. Sure can. But if we are willing to trust him, even if our emotions and our feelings don't want to, and if we're willing to do the work to find a person, uh, a mentor, somebody, a pastor, a, a leader, a friend who has a healthy relationship with the Lord, who is a safe place, then those things can be redeemed. Those things can be transformed from something of pain and uh, ugliness to something of redemption and beauty. And God can use those things for our good and for his glory. And I've experienced that profoundly over and over again. You know, the, the ultimate prize here as people walking on this earth is that when we receive in intimacy his genuine love, we're in a place to then give that same genuine love as family, as community, in relationship, in an intimate way. Think of the redefinition of an army of people, a community of people that everyone looks at each other as genuine, true family, with genuine, true love, and genuine and true intimacy. Yeah. That's God's view of living in community. That's his view of family. Yeah. That's his view of, of how to love and at what level. Yeah. And that's the, that's the beautiful picture that I always am given and that excites my heart when I meet with every individual that God brings beside me. Before we go, I just want to encourage you to really consider the relationships in your life. First and foremost, I want you to consider your relationship with Jesus, with God the Father, your Abba Father, with Holy Spirit. Do you have walls? Do you have areas that have become a cavern of separation? Probably out of simply self-protection. And consider your relationships in your life with your family, with your spouse, with your kids, with your friends, with the people that you 
have been called into community with? Are you willing to let yourself be vulnerable? Are you able to find those people that are safe? God brings people into our lives specifically for us to have relationship with, to be spiritual community with, to bear one another's burdens. Maybe it's time for you to receive that gift. And I know that it can be a little bit of a scary thing, but it's worth it. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just come before you right now, Lord, and I I thank you for your patience and your kindness. I thank you for your love that doesn't allow us to stay stuck, but that pursues us and gently nudges us out of our cocoon of self-protection. And, Lord, we want to be willing to say yes to you and we want to be willing to say yes to the relationships and the people that you've surrounded us with that you've called to walk with us that you have given us capacity to love we don't want to miss out on the gift it is to not just receive but to give and to be an expression of your heart for your people with one another So, Lord, would you expose the things that stand in the way? Lord, expose the lies of the enemy. I just pray that you would shine light in the darkness and you would give us discernment and wisdom to see what is for our good and what is not. What is in our life that's going to bring healing and freedom and what is not? And, Lord, would you give us the capacity to receive Thank you for your great, great love. Lord, would everyone listening come to know the height, the depth, the width, the breadth of your great love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Sacred Space Podcast. If you did, uh, would you just share it? Share it with your friends, with your family. Post this uh, link, all the places that you can post it. You're the best advertisement. And we just want as many people as possible to benefit from the things that God's doing in these conversations. And if you would like to help support this podcast, the production of this podcast, and other projects from Stockton Ministries, you can click the donate link in the episode notes or go to genastockton.com and click the donate button in the top right corner. There are exciting things coming. God's doing so many uh, really cool things that um, we would love for you to be a part of. If you want to reach out to us, I would love to hear from you. If you want to give us your email address so that we can let you know when new exciting uh, resources and events are happening, just shoot me an email and I'll get you connected. Well, I hope that you have an amazing week and we will see you next time in the sacred space.